Alright guys, so now we know what vertical projectile motion is, now in this video I'm going to show you how the calculations would work. It's quite a nice chapter, the calculations are very easy, but there's a few areas where I've seen students slip up in the past, and I'll, I'll highlight those areas. So here's the first question. So the first question says that a ball gets thrown upwards at a velocity of 50 meters per second. Determine how long it will take for the ball to reach its maximum height. Now you could definitely think of the question as follows. So it starts off from the ground at 50 meters per second and it's on its way up. Now we know that this ball is going to slow down, right? And remember in the previous video, how, by how much will it slow down? Well, every second it's going to slow down by 9.8 meters per second. So it's going to slow down by 9.8 meters per second every second. And so that's where the 2 comes from. So after 1 second, it's going to be traveling 40.2. So that's after 1 second. After 2 seconds, so I'd have to minus another 9.8. You'd get to 30.4. That's two seconds already. After three seconds, it would be going 20.6. So that's after three seconds. And then after an, after four seconds, you would say minus another 9.8. And now all of a sudden it's traveling 10.8. That's after four seconds. If you minus another 9.8, you're going to end up with one. So that's after five seconds. And then just after that, it would reach the top. So I predict the answer is going to be somewhere around 5.2. Now, if you were a caveman, you could definitely do calculations like this. But if you're living in the 21st century, well, then we've got formulas that do this for us. So let's bring up those three common formulas. So when I say three common formulas, I'm talking, to, I'm talking about those three over there. The fourth one is fine, but you'll see that you're barely going to use it. I know some students like to use it. I just don't really use it that often. I find that the other three work just perfectly. So all we need to know in order to know which formula to use is the following. We need to have a decent understanding of what, hap of what happens. So this ball leaves the ground. When it reaches its maximum height, what would the velocity be? Well, well done if you realize that at the maximum height, it's going to have a velocity of zero. And so the final velocity of the ball is zero. So we have that. So I'm going to go tick off all the VFs. Now you can do this method of ticking off, but eventually you'll get the hang of it and you won't have to do that anymore. What else do we know? Remember in the first lesson I showed you, that we always have the acceleration. Remember, it's always 9.8 downwards, so we can tick off all the A's. That's fantastic. Oh, by the way, these other formulas here, that's just in case you, uh, because remember, these original formulas, they were, we used them last year, and they were in the horizontal direction, so we use X, but in the vertical direction, you might wanna use the letter Y, but you don't have to do that, so we can cross those off. Now, the initial velocity we also have, that's 50, so I'm gonna tick off all the initial velocities. And so there we have it. So we can actually use any one of these formulas. Why? Because in equation number one, the only unknown is time. In equation number two, the unknown is also time. But notice it's got a t and a t squared. And then in equation number three, we've got x, which stands for the distance, or technically it stands for displacement. So we need to look at what we're looking for. It says determine how long. Okay, so we are looking for time. So you could use this equation or this equation. Whoops, I just realized we don't actually have the distance, so we can't use this one. So the only one that we're actually going to use is this first one. And so we can write it out as VF equals to V initial plus A change in time. Now, do you want to get good marks this year? Well, I'm 100% certain that everyone watching this would have said yes. If you want to do well this year, you need to, whenever you write down a physics formula, write a direction as positive. But Kevin, I don't know which direction to choose. Choose anything, okay? So I'm just going to choose up. Teachers just want to see you choose something. So now, the final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 50. Is the initial velocity going upwards or downwards? Well, it's thrown upwards, so we can make that a positive, because we chose up as positive. Then we say plus. Now, acceleration is always 9.8 down, but we've chosen upwards as positive. So unfortunately, acceleration, you're going to have to be negative. And then the time, we don't know what that is. Now we just solve this like a normal equation. So we're going to have 50 minus... 9.8 t equals to 0 and so t is going to be end up being 50 divided by 9.8 and if you divide those two 
we get 5.1. Okay, so remember when we did this using caveman style, we predicted that the answer would be about 5.2. So we got fairly close, but luckily we're doing a 21st century style, so we don't have to take two hours to do our questions. So there's the first question complete. Now when we go to question two, you must remember that we have the answer for question one, so we can use that if we want to. So we now have final velocity, we have, okay, no, we're not going to use that formula because that one we've already used. So now we have time, we have initial velocity, we have acceleration, and we have time. And so the next question says, determine the maximum height reached by the ball. Well, that will allow us, we can now use that equation. So you write it down. And then remember, guys, as soon as you write down the formula, just choose the direction as positive and don't spend more than two seconds deciding about that. There's no correct way to do that. You just need to get into the habit of choosing something. Okay, so we've chosen upwards as positive. So the initial velocity is going to be 50. And the time that this object's going to be moving from... Obviously, this ball's going to go up and then it's going to come down. But we are looking at the motion from the bottom to the top. Okay, and we worked out that that time is 5.1. So we will use 5.1 over here. Plus half. Now gravity is always 9.8 down. So because we've chosen upwards as positive, that must be a negative. And then we would have, oh no, we do have time. It's 5.1 squared. There we go. So you can just go type all of that in on the calculator. And that's going to give us 127.55 meters. So that is how far that ball will travel in those in that 5.1 seconds. Let's say you decided to choose downwards as positive. That's absolutely fine. Then we're going to get a so the initial velocity goes upwards, so that'll be negative. Time is always positive. Gravity is always downwards and we've chosen down as positive, so that stays positive and then we end up with not 5.2, 5.1 squared. You can go type all of that in on the calculator. And you're going to end up with a negative answer. Now that's absolutely fine. Let me explain. You chose downwards as positive, but you got a negative answer. That means that the distance or the displacement is actually going to be 127.55 meters up. Okay, because you chose down as positive, but you got a negative answer. And that makes sense. The ball did go up. It didn't go down. So the cool thing is, is that you don't have to, ch you can choose any choice of direction. You can choose up or down as long as you choose something. And remember, whatever you choose will affect whether you make certain parameters positive or negative.